This episode of Command N, the dark side of buying Twitter followers, how the size of your social network compares to the size of your brain, and an email app that's just for kids. Welcome to episode 260 of Command M. We hope that everybody is having a fabulous summer. We're sad to say that it is almost over. However, we have a great show for you today. Before we get into our headlines, wanted to mention that our Command N contest for our seventh anniversary is up and running. All you have to do is head on over to the context section on our website to get more information. One of the top headlines over the past couple of weeks in technology is Square's announcement that they have now teamed up with Starbucks. You'll soon be able to enter one of 7,000 Starbucks stores across the U.S. and pay for your coffee using the Pay with Square application. More interestingly is you'll soon be able to also pay for your coffee simply by using the GPS technology and the Square app. When you're walking through the door of Starbucks, they'll be notified at the cash that you have entered the store and your name will pop up and you won't even have to take your smartphone out of your pocket. This video has been out for a few weeks, but I recently discovered it thanks to Chris. What it is is a mashup that Read Write Web has created of announcements from Apple and Microsoft when they're launching the iPad and Surface. Good afternoon. Good morning. I certainly want to thank everybody for coming today. We've reimagined, redefining the reimagination. Reimagined for reimagining the tablet. This is the new. Microsoft Surface. We call it the iPad. That's what it looks like. Surface is super thin. The iPad is really thin. It's 10.6 inch, 9.7 inch, optically bonded IPS display at under 1.5 pounds. Just one and a half pounds. Browsing the web. I can browse smoothly. And I'm just going to go to Safari. Oops. Hang on just one. There. Excuse me, just a second. Surface works great for entertainment as well. A team of British anthropologists and psychologists have released a very interesting social media paper. Now, their findings have concluded that there is a direct linear relationship between the size of a person's social network and the size of an area of the brain known as the orbital prefrontal cortex. I did a little bit of my own scientific research and I took the Command N team and I mapped out all of their social networks. In my findings, I found that I had the largest social network and therefore it looks as though I must have the largest brain out of the entire team. Now let's check in with Jeff and Laura. In our work as social media consultants for MGI Media, we've been asked on a few different occasions whether a client should consider one of the various services for purchasing followers on Twitter. And now we have more reason than ever to say no way. A new web app from the company Status People now allows users to find out how many fake followers Twitter accounts have. Simply go to fakers.statuspeople.com and authorize the web app, and you can find the estimated percentages for both fake and inactive followers for any given Twitter name. It doesn't have to be your own. Generally, the higher number of followers for any account, the higher number of fake accounts, and while most people will have several percent worth of fake followers, the numbers for some accounts are alarming. If you've been paying attention to the news, Twitter is far from alone in this issue. Facebook has recently acknowledged that by its own count, a total of 8.7% of Facebook accounts are fake, whether duplicate accounts, misclassified accounts, or just pure spam. And while Facebook's own numbers may be conservative, at least the company is offering up this kind of information, which is a lot more than we can say for the spam and bot-ridden Google+. All these platforms have reasons they want to report a high number of users, whether it's advertising revenue, stock price, or that sort of thing. But it can't be ignored that by not doing more to control fake accounts, these platforms are compromising the user experience, and in some cases, misrepresenting the reach and number of real impressions for paid advertisers and others. Luckily, users of these platforms can help try to control spam and other unwanted messaging in ways that email seems incapable of. Each of Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus have mechanisms to report and or block users. So check out the posts we've done up on the CommandN.tv blog to see how you can do your part in making the social web a nicer place to be. My app pick this week is called Mailey. This is a great app for parents who have kids between the ages of 4 and 10. What this app does is allow young children to send emails. All they have to do is go into the iPad application and they can create digital crafts or they can also draw pictures and then they can choose one of a few different profile pictures to send this email to family or friends. 
This is Tom. One day, Tom wants to travel to space, and he wants to make sure everybody knows. That's why Mum installed Maylee on her iPad and gave Tom his first email account. Maylee is an email client especially designed for kids as young as four years old, with lots of cool and creative tools. You can draw, add backgrounds, take pictures, put stamps and even write. He can then send it to Grandma and Grandpa, his dad at work, his best friend Nico, his uncle Greg, and many more. That's all for this episode of Command N. As I mentioned off the top of the show, make sure that you enter our contest for our seventh anniversary. All you have to do is find the contest information on our website. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.